Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I want to talk about someone very significant in the life of every believer, doesn't matter if you're new on your path or not, if you really understand and implement this process to your spiritual life, I believe that you'd not just experience the presence of God but you'd be able to maintain this relationship effortlessly. I've been able to experience God from different religious beliefs, until I had to dive deeply into spirituality to seek the truth for myself. I found out some amazing facts about the Holy Spirit that has not been disclosed yet. I'd not just enlighten you on this deep mystery but I'd also be backing my ideologies up with biblical references. The Holy Spirit is a very important figure of the Holy Trinity, often labeled as the third person of the Trinity and I strongly believe that many religious figures and churches don't have this understanding of who the Holy Spirit is and what He stands for, so basically they don't talk about Him so often. This has created this misconception and has obviously given rooms for underrated perception of this mysterious figure named Holy Spirit. Let's take a quick trip to the Bible John 14 24-25 says, He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. Now, verse 26-27 says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. This scripture referenced a very important instruction from Christ, just before He ascended into heaven. Dot. When I meditated on these scriptures, I had this strong conviction that there was a very strong meaning behind it, so I prayed about it. God opened my eyes to really see things and He told me that He designed and created everything seen and unseen, and He has certain procedures to all things, just so it functions the right way it was designed. God told me that, what Christ was trying to teach His disciples was the right procedure and other to get to the Father in heaven. When we encounter the Word of God, it stirs up feeling of conviction that leads to total surrender based on the Word of God. Going further, when we want to accept Christ, we don't just accept Christ, it is the Holy Spirit that comes inside of us and purifies our bodies which is also a temple, then takes us Christ where we totally surrender to Him. God opened my eyes to see that a being can have the Holy Spirit in him, yet he's not fully surrendered or willing to accept Christ yet. It is only when we encounter Christ and have a relationship with Him, that He takes us to the Father. Oftentimes many of us who are not yet soaked up in the Word yet, might find this very challenging. When a believer gets converted, he goes through a purification process before meeting the Son and then the Father. This was the way it was designed to be. This is why we see many believers going back and forth, one day in and one day out. Many claim that they are committed members, yet they lack the structure and fail to exhibit the life of a true believer. We all have the Holy Spirit inside of us. The Holy Spirit gets activated by the living Spirit of God that takes us through this purification and sanctification process and other to get to Christ and then to the Father. This is what goes on behind the scenes that we can't see. Many religious groups will tell you that without Christ, you can't go to heaven. I agree with you on that, but I submit to you the truth based on true conviction and experimental encounter with the Word thus far, and I put it to you correctly that, without the Holy Spirit you can't get to heaven. Let's analyze deeply. 1. What will a soul be doing in heaven if he or she doesn't have the Holy Spirit of God in him? 2. The Holy Spirit purifies our soul and comes into our body with 12 other spirits including, love, joy, peace, happiness, prosperity, charity etc. How do we exhibit these actions and make heaven without these spirits in us? 3. The Holy Spirit activates our gifts such as speaking in tongues etc. How do we get fired up if we barely know how to pray in tongues? 4. How do we endure long suffering if we don't have the Comforter which is also known as the Holy Spirit? I can go on and on if you let me. I personally feel that there are so many errors, that needs to be corrected in the spiritual and religious communities. Many pastors do not say these things the way they are, neither do they don't educate their members about the biblical truth. The Holy Spirit is and will remain the chief commander of heaven, the Spirit of the Spirits. He is the living Spirit of God, the heavenly sanctifier and spiritual purifier. The Holy Spirit is the spiritual sunlight to our soul and without Him we cannot grow with God. Maybe you're not aware, but now you are. The Spirit brings discernment and discernment is a spiritual gift from God, so if He's underlooked and not acknowledged as a primary figure for our spiritual growth, then I wonder what these men of God nowadays teach their members. The Holy Spirit is the moderator and accumulator of other heavenly spirits and the right vendor to anyone who wishes to enter the Christ door. Certainly, the right quality cannot be seen without His equity. His message is to always maintain our sanity in God, therefore making your bodies the sanctuary so our souls never get to experience obituary. The Holy Spirit makes sure that no demonic entity enters our vicinity to cause uncertainty in our lives and psychology. 
Think about this and if there's still no clarity, then take it to God in prayers for confirmation. My name is Bazzi Francis, and thank you for listening. Do have a wonderful day.